Hey, shishters! Welcome back to my second channel, and welcome back to another voiceover where I just kind of rant and talk about whatever and show you guys the full unedited art. A few videos ago, I had promised that I was going to tell college stories. All the gross, all the drunk, and all the just plain weird and just plain cring cringeworthy stuff that I experienced working at the dorms, living at the dorms, just being in college. You know, I would see a lot of weirds, and I went to a small college, like, I can't even imagine going to, like, a big old party college, you know, and, like, seeing people, you know, on that massive of a scale. Another thing is, I was really involved with the police, like, every time, I was calling the police on everyone because of my job, it was, like, my job description as an RA to call the cops on whatever, whatever. <laughs> so, I hope I don't tell any, like, repeat stories, but man, I've been thinking this past week about all my college stories, and every time I think of a good one, I'm like, oh, that's gonna be so good to tell. And, who knows, maybe when I'm 60 years old, I can look back on this and cringe really hard. <laughs> so, here it goes. Uh, the first story I'm gonna tell you is about my roommate. So I spent the first year in college at a community college, living at home, working at Pizza Hut, which was a terrible job, which that could be a story on its own because they ended up stealing from me. And I made like crap for money and it was like a whole dramatic thing. I would like quit on the spot and I was crying and that was like a whole entire thing that I could like tell you guys. But anyway, and I should have reported them to the cops. I should have been like, these people are stealing my money. I'm not gonna put up with it. And, oh, but anyway, don't get me started on like, stories from the past. But anyway, so I had this roommate and, you know, she was nice. She added me on Facebook beforehand because they sent out letters that who you're going to get paired with. And, you know, it was good. Um, and I was nice. She was nice to me the first night that I met her. And yeah, it was everything was good the very first few hours that I met her. Well, uh, she was like, I'm going to go to bed early tonight because I have you know some stuff I have to do in the morning for classes or whatever and so I remember I am a night owl like bad I am a terrible night owl like my natural sleep schedule is literally like four in the morning to like afternoon so I remember staying up and eventually she fell asleep and as soon as she fell asleep I heard like the loudest snoring of my life and I'm not salty about this I'm not salty I think it's hilarious that I went through all this and I think we grew <laughs> as people after this college experience but I just remember laying there and hearing <sighs> like the loudest snoring of my life <laughs> I couldn't sleep and I eventually ad ad um, adapted a habit for knocking myself out with NyQuil every single night because I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep without knocking myself out. Like the snoring, I kid you not, like I was literally like, I swear to God, I was like vibrating at various points in my life. Like, like I'm not even kidding you, like the vibrations were so loud and then we're in that little tiny room. Oh my God. So yeah, a lot of the times I didn't even sleep there. I would hang out with my friends or I'd go visit my boyfriend at the time or you know, I would just like want to be out of there all the time. Another thing that my roommate used to do, she had like she was kind of a dirty person. I mean, I'm I'm not the cleanest and I wasn't the cleanest and I admit like my room was kind of bad at times, you know, at Eddie Hall, but <laughs> but not roommate bad. Like for example, she didn't throw out the trash which I don't know, the trash was like right behind our dorm. I don't know why she never did, but her feminine napkins. I remember one time, like she just left them there. Her used feminine nap, her pads basically. And I walked in and after not being there for a few days and just like the stench of her, mm, you know what I'm trying to say, like of the used napkin filled the air and it was like I literally couldn't I just like got my books and like ran out it was the worst smelling thing ever oh my god um another weird thing that she used to do is like she would eat chick yeah they have cheese flavored ramen noodles and she would put like ranch dressing in the ramen <laughs> in the ramen noodles and like eat it and it was like the weirdest flavor combination in my opinion like I don't know, it made them like all like weird and slimy and I just could never get that. I never could eat that kind of ramen noodles. Uh, she was also a party girl. Like, a lot of the time she would bring back guys and I don't know why. I was like the most awkward person alive. Like, I remember like 
one time she was making out with a guy and they were like they were about to bang and i was just sitting there like on my ds just like awkwardly playing whatever pokemon and i remember just like feeling so awkward and like now as an adult i would be like okay can you please stop that or like can you wait till tomorrow? Cause like, I gotta sleep, you know? Like I'm not here to, I don't pay three grand every single semester to hear y'all guys make out. But back then I was kind of shy and reserved. And so I remember like being so awkward. I put on my shoes and I interrupted their making out to tell them like, hey guys, I'm gonna go to Walmart to check out the Lord of the Rings new game. Do you guys want anything? And they were like both stopped making out and they looked at me and they were just like, no, we don't want anything. <laughs> and I just like put on my shoes and like scurried away. I would also like to go on record to say that there has been more than a few times that I would wake up to the sweet sounds of her vomiting in the sink and she just, you know, just brush her teeth. We didn't have any cleaner so she the smell would stay there but she'd just rinse it off and go right to bed and I'd just be there all night grossed out not being able to sleep because of the snoring and you know, it just, it wasn't a good first roommate experience. And so now I don't care like how much money I have to pay out of my own pocket. I will never have another roommate ever again. But kids, don't be too afraid of going to college. Like, a lot of people have bad roommates. A lot of people have good roommates. A lot of people, most people have just like, eh, neutral roommates who they just add on Facebook and then they go their separate ways once the year's over. That's pretty much how it's gonna probably go for you. I remember one time when I was an RA and there had been rumors of this guy who had uh, marijuana in his room. Now, I'm, I am not, I've never smoked weed in my life. I'm not against it, but this guy, you know, we just thought we were gonna find a little something something in his room. So anyway, me, and I'm not gonna real, real names or anything obviously like that, but me and my other coworkers, we go knock on this guy's door and hey man, I heard we're gonna have to search, I'm sorry. And he gets really upset, but he's like really cool about it. He's like, yeah man, I understand. Like I'm bummed out that you're doing it, but yeah, go ahead and search my room. So by the way he was acting, we can tell like this dude probably has, you know, he probably has pills on him or maybe he has weed on him, I don't know. So I remember the police come and I I had to just, my job was to like keep the door open. Like you have to prop open the door just in case like the door shuts behind you and then they lock it and then like the RA is stuck in there with like the dangerous suspect, you know? So anyway, my job was just sitting there and I remember that day my, like they didn't find anything. They couldn't find anything anywhere. But then my boss was like, you know what, let's go look in the ceiling. So he gets a little step stool or chair or whatever, and he pushes the ceiling in, because it's one of those square ceilings. And he reaches in, boom, a big ass jar of marijuana. And he pulls it down and we're all in shock. And he's like, hold on, hold on. So he reaches back in there, not one, not two, but three giant jars of marijuana. Like these, I've never seen that much in my life. Like I said, I've never even smoked, let alone seen like, I, it was like, I don't even know. It was like a gallon size thing of marijuana. And so he's like, hold on, I see something else. And he reaches in there and he pulls out a gun. This guy, this kid who was 19, maybe even 18 years old, he had a freaking gun in his room and like at the college, he was just chilling. And, and like, he was so calm afterwards. He was just so calm about it. He's like, yeah, man, sorry, I, I sell weed and you know, need protection and like all this stuff. And I'm just like sitting here like, oh my God, I just busted a drug dealer, didn't we? Oh my God. But nothing compares to the time that I was directly involved in that. Not drug dealing but I was involved in what was going on in the room. So anyway, Zach and I were watching a movie. I was working that night and 12 o'clock hits and I have school early the next day. Like I have to wake up at six or seven in the morning. So I just wanted to have a good night, relax. And so I was tell I told Zach it's midnight. Hey, I'll be back in like 10 minutes. I gotta go walk the building, make sure nothing's on fire, all that good stuff. So anyway, uh, my coworker and I, we're walking the hallway, we stop by his room, and he's like, hey, I need to get something. So he goes in his room and he comes out, and as soon as he closes the door, we hear, shh, 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 it's the RAs, it's the RAs, guys, guys, calm down, go, and then we hear beer cans, like, shuffling, it's the RAs, it's the RAs. So we just look at each other and we're like, oh my god, we just stumbled onto an incident. So we knock on the door, and this guy, he comes out and he's like acting as not drunk, but drunk as possible. He's like, <laughs> hey guys, you know, like drunk off his ass. He's like, can I help you? You know, and all sly. And we're like, hey, it's quiet hours. You're being loud, be quiet. And just like the air from him opening his door, just like this aroma of Budweiser like hits us. 
And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll be quiet, I'll be quiet. So he closes the door, and they're not quiet at all. And you can hear even more beer cans, like, being tossed around everywhere. Like, they're trying to clean up and hide, because they know they've been busted at this point. So we call the cops, and I'm the only girl at this point. So the cops come, they open the door, and out of- there was four people in the room. There was two girls and two guys. And then they're pretty much all drunk. I mean, they're not super bad, but they're drunk. But there's this one girl who isn't even talking. Like, she's quiet, and she's not responding to the cops. She's not responding to anybody. Um, this girl would have died. Like, if these people, in order to keep this girl safe, like, keep their own butt safe, they wouldn't have reported this girl, but she was gonna die. And so uh, her eyes were rolling back to the her, to the back of her head. She was like sleeping on her stomach so she could have choked on her own vomit. But I remember I was like, oh my God. And so the my boss was like, you need to go attend to her. You need to put her on her side, make sure she doesn't throw up all this stuff. You like make sure she's okay. Like attend to her while the paramedics come who were at the exact same time were dealing with another incident and so there was some reason why they couldn't immediately come. It was like a five or ten minute delay. So in the meantime, I'm like taking care of this girl. And her cousin's there. One of the two girls that was there in the room drunk. And she is like crying her head off and like patting her cousin or whatever. And I'm just like awkward just like there with this drunk girl who's like literally passed out. Like having a hard time breathing. And I remember the paramedics finally, finally come. And at this time, the cops got all the information and everything. And this drunk girl, she just like gets up. And we were all so happy, like this girl got up. And she just looks at me and bleh, right all over my clothes, right all over my hands, right all over her bed, right, or not her bed, but somebody's bed, like all over the place. And I'm just sitting there covered in vomit. And I couldn't even go clean up because I was the only girl there. So I had to keep track of this girl. And I remember the EMTs, they took their sweet time. They like, they were just, oh my God. They were like chit chatting and they were like, I'm sure they were used to seeing people drunk all the time like this, but this girl was like bad, bad, bad. Um, in fact, she even stayed at the hospital for days after. That's how bad it was with her alcohol poisoning. And then I just remember, I didn't get back to like three in the morning. I had to walk the cousin who was not as drunk home. Like they sent me out of school at like three in the morning to like go walk this girl home. And then I came back given she was on campus too, but I was like, ugh. So here I am like three in the morning, covered in vomit, tired. I have to wake up in like a few hours. And I just remember like getting back to my room and Zach was still there. He waited for me cause he was worried about me. I didn't have my cell phone. And I was just, oh, I was just done. I remember just like taking a shower, just laying in bed and just being like, I hate this job. This job sucks. <laughs> um, and now to end this story, I have one last story for you guys, but this story is a good story. It's not like a sad story. It's actually a hilarious story. And I, I think back and I'm still so embarrassed. That's going to be another video I do is like my most embarrassing moments because I have an endless, endless amount of embarrassing stories. But anyway, uh, back when I was in college, like, cosplay was not as huge as it is now, especially in, like, rural area areas like me. Like, now it's kind of, like, a lot of hot girls, you know, on Instagram, guys follow it. It's, like, a really intricate, cool thing. But back then, it was not a cool thing. <laughs> like, it was just like, why is this weirdo dressed up as a cat, you know? So anyway, I decided to dress crossplay, actually, as Goku from Dragon Ball Z. And I remember going to Walmart, making the, getting the cheapest orange and blue materials I could find, and I made my costume. But the only thing was, is I did not know how to make a waistband. Like, I didn't know how to do that. And so I remember I just decided I'm going to tape it together. Like, just get some random tape that I have, like scotch tape, and just tape it around my waist. And I remember the first time I put it on, I was like... I felt transformed. I was like, I am Goku. Like, this is awesome. I'm, you know, I look straight up out of an anime. So I went to the lobby area to go show off my new threads. And my friend, who is actually still my friend to this day, he was in the lobby and he's a very sassy person. And like, I remember, but he was talking to somebody else by the exit and I was in the main area talking to the person who worked at the front desk. And there was a lot of people surrounding me asking me about my costume and I felt so cool. And I remember turning around and uh, my back was facing my friend and all of a sudden I hear, Ray! 
Yo, panties are showing, girl! And I remember just like grabbing my butt and turning around and my friend Tevin, who you're probably gonna see on my channel very soon, he was just looking at me like, girl! <laughs> and so I just like ran off in total embarrassment because I walked this whole entire lobby full of people, full of people I lived with for college with my bright grandma panties hanging out. FML. I still am so embarrassed about it now. Like I said, I think that'll be my next video that I do is just embarrassing stories that have happened to me. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy these style videos on my second channel. And uh, yeah, with that being said guys, I love you so much and I will see you next video. Bye!